Well, here we are again. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. How do we know God made man? Where do we find that out? We find that out in His book, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, God's Bible, His book, His anointed book, His, if you please, handwritten, written by the hand of men, inspired by God Himself. This is what I want you to know, he says, and I'm going to have a man pin it down because I made man the crowning part of the glory of the earth. He is the crowning thing. He has the ability to think. He has a volition. I've given him a volition. That means that he can have a desire to think many ways. Ah. Do you think today, you think today, the computer is smart? Did you know that the computer reveals the, the uh, ability of the mind of man? God made man with that ability. And uh, so we have that ability. But we have to uh, program it. Look, look in chapter 2. We saw the first Sabbath. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on a seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that it has had rested from all his work that God had created him and made. Uh, there are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. <laughs> hey, God was the seed holder. And he had already made it before it grew. For the Lord God had not ceased, caused it to rain on the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the heaven, from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Okay, let's get down to the bare facts. God reached down from heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they three agreed they were going to make man in their image. And he made this man, laid him down by the river Euphrates. And he's laying there on the banks, this unlifed body no life in it God bent down from heaven and breathed the soul into this man this is an eternal thing that's going to live forever this body he made is going to perish from dust it was and dust it will go back but the soul that God put in him was eternal and every man from that day forward has been born with an eternal soul. Now that soul has a destiny, either heaven or hell. God gave man a volition, the ability to choose. Now he can choose to go to heaven, or he can choose to go to hell. <clears throat> there is a time when a man is living in a place to where if he died, he would go to heaven because uh, the, he hasn't come to the age of accountability. What is the age of accountability? The age of accountability is when you have the knowledge that God is God and the devil's the devil. And you have a choice. You can serve one or the other. That is the knowledge that call, is called accountability. When you come to that knowledge, you could be five years old and be brought to that knowledge. 
or uh, at any age. There could be people on this earth 30 years old who have never come to that knowledge, who have never been approached yet with it. And if they haven't come to the knowledge of accountability, only God can answer where their soul is going to spend eternity. Because you and I, that is above us. God is the only one who can make that, that decision. Now I believe God can speak to any man, anytime, anywhere, without anybody else, if he cares to. And I'm sure that the man in deepest Africa, or anywhere other part of any country, in the deepest part of the country, where he has not heard somebody come and preach the word, that God himself can give the man in his heart the ability to know there is a supreme being and say, whoever you are, the supreme being, which would be God, and this is the one Paul came and explained at Mars Hill, explained to those people. He said, as I walked up here, he said, I saw the sign that said to the unknown God, and he said, I want you to know, that's the God I serve. And he's the God of heaven. He's unknown to you because you haven't seeked out for him. You've been using the gods that you created with your own hands. But I serve a God that was the creator of this world. And so, let's go on. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of Eden, thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the prayer first is Pison, that is that which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. If a man wants to find gold, he can go find the head of the river of Havilah, and he'll find the gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedlam, and there's Onyx Stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. And the same is that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Adekel. And that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man, put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Can you imagine? There, I was talking a little while ago about the mind of man. The mind of man was so smart when he saw an animal that he called a giraffe, it was a giraffe. When he saw a lion, he called a lion, a tiger, a tiger. A hand, a hand, a chicken, a chicken, a duck, a duck, a goose, a goose. He called every animal what that animal is. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to all the fowls of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. Remember, when God made Adam, he said he made them, Adam and Eve. And took one of his ribs and closed it up, the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, 
and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. Wow. This a little pun goes around amongst preachers. The reason God had Adam name all of the animals before he made the woman is he'd have never been able to get the job done if the woman had been by his side. She would have wanted to refute that being called a giraffe. <laughs> she would have said, we're not going to call that a lion, we're going to call that a hairy creature. And so the joke is, is that's why he waited before he made the woman. Uh, the institution of marriage. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is why it's so very vital, so very important today. Very doubtful to be a young person watch one of these Ph. tidbits. But if you're not married yet and you're watching one of these be careful. Because when you marry, it's one time forever. God does not forgive marriage. The Bible says you marry that woman, man, and you live with it until you die. And if you don't, as far as I'm concerned, you're still married to that woman and you're living in adultery if you're living with another woman. Whether you divorced her or not. When you two became one, that's the only time you'll ever be one with a woman. You'll never be one again with a woman. It'll always be that you're living in adultery. I don't care if you're married, if you're married, legally married, and got a piece of paper that says that. That's not biblical. Biblical is you're married one time and that's it. What does that cause you to not be able to do? It causes you to not be able to be a pastor of a church. Why is that? Because you're not living in marriage now because the first woman you married was your woman. And now you're living in a type of an adultery. Well, will God bless you? He can bless you. You've been forgiven, but you're still living in the penalty. You've been forgiven, but you have an earthly penalty. And that earthly penalty will follow you until you die. God has leeway here. He gives leeway here in this incident. It's like following the channel with a boat. You can have just a little leeway here or there, but be careful. I put one on a sandbar one day coming out of Chesapeake Bay. We were hauling a dredge. I like to get ran over by that thing. Uh, put this thing in a sandbar. Put the tug in the sandbar. Because I didn't listen to what the captain said. He said, wake me up when you get to a certain point because it's treacherous. He said, you'll think that you're all right and find yourself over here in a sandbar. And I was too smart for my own good, and I put it on a sandbar. Needless to say, I don't know if I've ever had a worse of chewing out. <laughs> and the Lord God caused a deep seat to fall on Adam and took one of his ribs out. This was after he named the animals and whatever. Now, let's go on to chapter 3. There was an animal on this earth that was not good. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He told a lie. He made a false statement. He could talk. He was more subtle than any other beast of the field because he could talk. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. He didn't say that either. Lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Innocence. Like a little boy and girl sitting in a bathtub, never thinking about they're different. That's how Adam and Eve were. That, that difference between them physically was not in the picture to them. They were innocent of that. And the devil didn't like that. He wanted that to be destroyed. So the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God, the Lord God, amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. It's called passing the book. Still being done today by everybody. And the Lord God sent unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. This is why we think that at one point in time, the uh, devil... Uh, undoubtedly it looked like a some type of cattle and now he's going to be cursed above every beast of the field and on his belly shall he go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life I'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee I could really stir up a bee's nest right here the husband is supposed to rule over the woman. But I can also tell you this, the husband is supposed to be proper. Yes, he can rule over the woman, but he's supposed to rule over the woman and love her as he loves himself. Or even more. And take care of her and see that the only thing he rules over that woman when he rules over her is to enhance her. And Adam, he said, 
because thou hast hearkened unto thy voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Listen to verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. How about that? There wasn't any thorns and thistles until sin came and then thorns and thistles came. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return. I heard a very good analogy the other day. My preacher, Brother Don Yancey, faithbaptistchurch.com LaGrange, Georgia look it up faith.com LaGrange, Georgia Brother Don Yancey uh, probably one of the most astute men you'll ever listen to well versed well rehearsed well prayed up well, seeking the face of the Lord, that what he says be what is supposed to be said. And making sure that it's biblically correct. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Two skins. He made coats of skin. One animal sacrifice wouldn't cover both people. He sacrificed two lambs, one for each. They were one in one sense and yet Spiritually, they were two. Sin is an individual thing. Sin is different than the physical body in a sense. It comes between the soul and God. The soul of man breathed into man by God was still joined with God. But when sin came in, it pushed that soul away. And now there's a void between God and that soul. Man has to fill that void with repentance. And say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Come in my heart and save my soul. Your soul is what he's saving forever. Not this body. Yes, we'll have a new body. And heaven, who knows? Nobody really knows. Maybe we'll all be 33 years old as Jesus was when he went to the cross. I don't know why, but he said you're going to look like you're going to be known as you're known on earth. Now, I don't know if that means you're going to be known as you're known on earth in face and in substance or the way you acted on the earth. I'm known on this earth as preaching. Everywhere I go, people say, hey, preacher, hey, preacher, hey, preacher, hey, preacher. I'm known as preacher on this earth. Maybe I'll be known as preacher in heaven. I don't know. But he said, we're going to have a likeness. We're going to be known in heaven as we're known on the earth. Now, I don't know if that's physical or spiritual. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, talking to the Son and the Holy Spirit, to know good and evil, and now lest he put his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Edom a cherubim's and the flaming sword which turned every way 
to keep the way of the tree of life. This cherubim had four faces on it. And every face looked a different direction all at the same time. What was he watching for? He was watching for mankind to not be able to come and eat of that tree until that tree was taken to heaven. That tree of life which was birthed on this earth. Jesus Christ. The tree of eternal life. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten me a man from the Lord. Do you know they didn't record women in that day? Eve may have had a dozen or two daughters and they were not recorded. But one time she conceived and she said, I got me a man child now. That's what she was looking for. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of the sheep. But Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came and passed that Cain brought the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. <coughs> you see, God's first offering for sin was two little lambs. And he took their clothes, a sheep, and he took their clothes and he dressed Adam and Eve with the sheep's clothing. And God has always used sheep as a reference of that which was accepted by God. But unto Cain and unto his offering had he not respect. Cain was very wrong and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? Look, remember God's still talking with people on the earth in the flesh. If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall he his, be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not him. I'm my brother's keeper. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Ooh, we, the living soul, the life of the blood. The life of the blood, the living soul of man. This is one of the most complex things in the body. The blood. We can get tainted in our blood today and, and get different types of cancer. Is it all caused by sin? I think all sickness came from sin somewhere. Is it all caused today by various Deliberate sins, I think that's a possibility. I think we cannot overrule the fact that could be. We've got to be careful ourselves how we walk circumspectly with the Lord and do as He would have us do. Well, our time's about come and gone. The curse came on Cain because he slew Abel. Now henceforth, he said, when you till the ground, it won't do what you want it to. You see, God's the one that makes it grow. You can put the seed in the ground, but you can't make it grow. God's the one that gives the increase, he said. 
And if he's not blessing you, there's not going to be any increase. A lot of times come and gone. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the words, and may God bless you. Goodbye.